morning and welcome to Open Heavens Review for Thursday, 13th of August, 2020. Today's topic is Holiness Made Simple. Holiness Made Simple. A Bible text is taken from Luke chapter 9 from verse 23 to 26. Luke 9, 23 to 26, I read from the New King James Version. It says, Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? Verse 26. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have a memory verse from Luke chapter 9 verse 23, which is the first verse that I read, Luke 9 23, and it says in the King James Version, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And this uh, memory verse actually forms the basis of the simplicity of holiness not because holiness itself is simple but the simplification of holiness as we have it today many people actually believe or think that it's impossible to live holy but this is actually not true and this thought probably comes from the fact that they look at holiness as something huge something big and then the fact that as human beings as children of god we have to live holy all the days of our lives and it looks like, oh, possibly there will be days where you would sin and all of those kind of things. And people begin to wonder how it is really possible to live holy. But Jesus Christ actually lived a holy life. He didn't commit sin while he was alive. And that was why it was the perfect sacrifice for the atonement of the sin of the world. Because the Bible makes us to understand that he that had no sin was made sin for us. He bore our sins on him, not because he himself had sinned. It wasn't atoning for his own sins, it was atoning for ours. And if Jesus could have done it, then we can do it as well. Because God's grace is sufficient for us all. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 says, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And we see here that Paul was saying that he would rejoice, he would be glad in his infirmities and what seems to be weaknesses in his life because it is then that the power of Christ rests on us. And the power to live a holy life is not ours to generate. It is for us to rely on God, rely on Jesus Christ. And because we are looking at him as our perfect example in all things, by the fact that he was able to live holy, we also will be able to live holy by patterning our lives after him. Now, when we look at the concept of holiness with so much fear and the fact that, you know, it is near impossible, we look at it from our eyes of our, from, we look at it from the point of view of our own weakness. Because when our weaknesses are always before us, it makes us feel that holiness is impossible to um, attain but holiness is simply obeying obeying the word of god walking according to the leading and according to the dictates of the holy spirit who we already have with us and if you don't have the holy spirit with you then you're not yet a child of god and it's not even about talking about holiness your first step should be giving your life to christ inviting the holy spirit into your life then you will be able to live holy. James chapter 4 verse 17 
says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So the moment you have your instructions, you know that those are the good things to do as a child of God. You have the word of God with you, and then you refuse to do it. It becomes sin. But to you who knows how to do good, and then you do it, you are living a holy life. Once you know the right thing to do, and you simply do it, you are living a holy life. We have in the commandments, we should not steal, we should not kill, we should not covet our neighbor's things, don't bear false witnesses. And the moment you keep to these words, living according to these standards, you are living a holy life. Now, you may say obedience to every single instruction from God is not easy, but if you take it one at a time, then you will see that it's actually possible to do it. Lumping all of it together and thinking about all of it together at once might make it look so complicated. And of course, when it comes looking complicated, it looks unattainable. But when we take it one day after another, our memory verse for today, Luke 9, 23, says, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. So the denial is not thinking, oh, for the rest of my life, this is how it will be. But God has given us, you know, a structure in life where we have morning and evening, where we have 24 hours in a day. And the moment you wake up in the morning and make a decision to live a holy life that day, then it becomes more easier to bear. You have 24 hours to think about, possibly less than 24 hours because part of it is while you're asleep. So when you say, I'm picking up my cross daily and I'm following Christ daily, it allows us to drop whatever habits or whatever things that, you know, might not glorify God in our lives and pick up a lifestyle of holiness. Jesus said that we should take up our cross daily. And, you know, there's an example that we have in today's devotion now that Pastor Ia Deboye put in there. And we're talking about, you know, keeping your teeth clean. When you think about the concept of keeping your feet clean the whole or the rest of your life or for the entire years you're on earth, it might look like a whole lot of big, huge process and things that would uh, be cumbersome to achieve. But if you bother rather about how to keep your teeth clean one day after a time, then when you make up your mind and decide, I will not let a day go by without brushing my teeth, and you do that every day of your life, then you are able to keep clean teeth, clean breath all the days of your life. And in that same way, picking up that same concept, we can uh, you know, think about holiness that way. And this helps us to simplify it. So whenever we wake up in the morning, just like we decide it's morning, I'm brushing my teeth, you wake up in the morning renewing your commitment to God to live a holy life. And then when you do it that day, keeping your commitment throughout that day, then you will live a holy life for that particular day. And then the next 24 hours, you make the same commitment every single day, meaning that you pick up a lifestyle of holiness. You pick up a habit of living a holy life. It will get to a time where it will come to you naturally because you have done it over and over and you know what it actually means to live a holy life. By the time you add another set of 24 hours to, you know, today it becomes two days. You add another set of 24 hours, three days, and then one week is over, one month is over, one year is over, and then 10 years, and then 30 years of your life, and another 50 years, and that is how to take it simply. Just take up your cross daily, renewing your commitment to God daily, making sure that you are committing your ways to him daily, picking up his words daily. So holiness is possible. We just need to make it a daily goal and then set out during the day to achieve it. I want us to pray this morning and I want you to say, Father, help me to live a holy life today. Help me to live a holy life. And let this be my commitment every day of my life in the name of Jesus. Help me to wake up 
renewing my commitment to you every day. In the name of Jesus, help me to wake up every morning committing to live a holy life throughout that day in the name of Jesus. You said it in your word that I should be holy as you are holy. This is my aim, O God, and I pray that it help me to break it down, picking up my cross daily in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, as I've set this goal, this target for myself, I know that I can do all things through you. Because your word says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Thank you, Father, for the grace to fulfill and achieve that goal today. Thank you because tomorrow it will be easier to do. Thank you because, and this is how I continue to pick it day after day until I'm living a lifestyle of perpetual holiness. Thank you because holiness is my reality. Holiness is my lifestyle. Holiness is my habit. I give you praise, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.